Hello and welcome to my Pure Data and Unity integration game level. So for this we use the game level tanks and use Pure Data as the audio engine with Kalimba acting as the integration package which connects both of these two engines together. So Kalimba primarily used for mobile integration can be used obviously in Unity as the game engine itself. So for this project it was a case of just downloading the Unity Kalimba project and then once we have that project then implementing the game uh, tanks level and then from there using the Kalimba test patch um, that would act as our master patch and then from there we could then start creating pure data patches. So when tackling this game level I looked at a few different main key areas so that was sounds that were interactive, um, musical and ambient. So I'm now going to take you step by step going through each of these patches that I've created and then after I've taken you through each one I'll then show you how they work within game and show them working side by side. So the first patch that I'm going to show you is a rock impact sound. So obviously when the tank is driving around um, it may hit different rock structures and stuff. Um, this sound isn't integrated into the game but I wanted to um, show it anyway. So on the left we have a step counter, so every time a bang is sent, um, depending on which number it is on, so currently it's on 2, um, that sound will then play in accordance. The idea was that within Unity there would be a way to hook up uh, an on trigger enter with the tank on collisions onto rocks which are tagged as rocks in game. So just to show this working. So every time I'm pressing that bang, which is the green button here, it's counting up to a maximum of four values. This shows what value we're at at the moment. So um, because we're using um, programming, zero counts as the fast number. So zero counts as one, and then that goes to the one, two, and three. Okay, and then within here, it's just a simple case of using an inlet to make sure that we see this message that sends a bang. This sends now two bangs uh, with a delay of one second. So once the bang is received, it then looks for a WAV file specifically named Rock Impact 2, and then that first bang then reads to play the sound, which is then sent to an outlet, which is this one here, and then from here it's sent down to a digital audio converter. So all of these have a similar layout. The only thing that's really changing is the name of the WAV file that's being read. <coughs> Obviously, hearing sounds um, consecutively um, can be picked up quite quickly. So I've made a random counter here to again kind of make it a little bit more interactive, make sure there's less ear fatigue. I haven't hooked it up to the AC, but these are all the same. It's just not connected to a DAC. So if you look at this number, you'll notice that every time that I press the bang or a bang signal is sent. A random number is displayed, meaning that each time one of these will be played randomly. Okay, next I used a preset exploding noise and then adjusted the values to my own liking. So, this is what my exploding noise sounds like. So, originally it had a massive booming effect, but because within this game you can basically spam the fire button having these big massive booms constantly playing didn't work out. I wanted something short and sharp, um, not too intrusive, so people still get the input of, okay, there's been an explosion, but nothing which is going to be like, oh, I don't want to fire because that sounds really, really loud. So, it's not that bad, it's got a short attack and uh, even shorter attacks. So next is my engine, so this is a interactive part. Um, so when the player uses WASD or 
up, down, left, right on the arrows. This is triggering the engine noise, so it recognizes within the script. I'll just pull up the script a second. So every time that, say for example, player one wants to go forward, they press the W key down, so get key down, press W. That sends a message to my engine, which within pure data is this one. So using the receive sample, once Unity detects the W key, I'm telling Kalimba to send a bang to receive a engine move, which is here. This then in turn sends it to here, so bang is sent, and then this is where this is played. Um, similarly, when the player lets go of W, so get key up, I use the engine off, which is set up to this red bang here, which turns the engine off. So, just to demonstrate that working. <laughs> forward I wanted there to be a little bit of a ramp up I didn't want it to go straight from zero to the value that I inputted so just using the short line and making sure that over time that it reaches that value just made it sound a little more authentic and then I found that the engine ramping down needs to be a little bit quicker because there's a lot more stopping and moving in the game um, I did play around with how to distinguish through stereo which player was moving and originally I tried it using the digital audio converter so using a channel on the left side for player one and channel on the right side for player two but due to some issues um, with integration itself uh, which I wasn't sure how to fix I chose just to present it in stereo um, but this is something I was looking into so just to show player two working <laughs> Okay. Now within the game, there's a graphical like a, a GUI, basically a narrow form, just to show the trajectory of where the round is going to go. I want there to be a sound to this, so the players could distinguish between when that arrow was going to present itself. So again, using a similar system of when certain keys. So this for player one is the space bar, for player two it's the enter key. Uh, when they're pressed down and when they're released these relate up to the receive symbols here so fire charge on and fire charge off so when depending on how long they hold down the space key is how long that this uh, white noise filter goes through and again using time base means that I can control uh, the velocity of how it sounds. Okay next with the music I use the sequencer so it looks a little bit complicated so I'll just break it down for you. So when the bang signal, uh, sorry toggle signal is sent, show that, to receive symbol music R, um, it sends two messages two ways. First one being up here to 130 which acts as a 130 number message. This goes into the PD counter, and this is where that right hand inlet here sets the BPM to 130. Now, using this, this is where we start to look into where the musical information is being gathered. So, using a step sequencer, I've made 64 different steps, and each time it's counting up. Um, at a rate that I set. So here is basically a preset that I've made uh, for my level. So using these messages here on every single step, each one of these will then be selected through this system here. And again, it's the case of when the number lines up with whatever it is. So say for example, the fast one would be one. That fast one will be one here and that will select the bank here which will then send a message to my kick symbol 
um, again reading the file through naming conventions the kick, bass, and the arpeggio. So although it's what the information is being held here, it's actually reading it from this array over to the right. Um, this is just way so that you, if you wanted to, you could have multiple presets with lots of different numbers. You press on it, and then from there, the array would be where the information for the step sequencer is going. So I'll just show this working. Next, I wanted a sound that when one of the players had won, or if there was a draw, um, big massive text comes on the screen saying winner, uh, round one, loser, draw. I wanted there to be a sound that replicated that, so again, using the read sample um, WAV system, setting it up to within the scripts, so I believe it's under game manager, using the Kalimba send bang to receiver, I can then tell. PD to play this sound here, which then lines up ready for the next round to start. Yep. So the ne last area that I was looking into was ambiences, so I wanted the level to feel like it was alive. So the first one, because it is tanks and does look like a war zone, um, I wanted there to be some kind of battlefield ambience, so again using lots of samples and layers that I put into one WAV file. Um, when the round starts, this is general battlefield ambiences going on. Okay. And to add on to the engine noise, so whenever the player was moving forward, backwards, left, right, in any direction, I wanted there to be some engine noise that went with it. So this is just a low hum that a tank would normally make. Um, just again using some simple oscillators here and there, setting the pre-existing values and then using a metronome to add, uh, to write to in a graphical array. Um, this is where you can see what's actually happened um, with the oscillators here. So if I was to turn it off here, two of them, this is what these two on the right are doing. So turn it off, there's going to be no movement. Okay, and finally, this is another one which I didn't implement. Um, I'll explain why now. So, this is a simple toggle switch on the message received every seven seconds, so metronome every seven seconds. It's going to randomly pick a number um, up to 200. This is again just showing the number in its state. And these are connected to a noise which I've um, filtered to how I like it to kind of give the wind ambience I was looking for. The only reason why I didn't implement this is because as you can hear, the steps are quite sudden. There's no real old, uh, envelope to it. And sometimes it can make a distorted noise. Um, which obviously is counterintuitive to what I was going for. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the scripts. So here, under tank movement, using the Kalimba Sembang to receiver, we can make different things happen. Just getting under game manager. This is where a lot of the uh, ambience noises are kept and the music. Because this is all to do when the tanks are spawned into the level. Okay, 
So we're now going to start the level.